Can you believe it? This is part five of Nick Color Effects Contrast Filters, and this is the fifth and final part. Today it's the Contrast Color Range Filter, and this is a great filter, an often overlooked filter, but very effective. Stay tuned. You don't want to miss this episode. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the joy of editing with yours truly, Dave Kelly. Thank you for joining me again today. Yes, this is the fifth part of the Nick Contrast Filters and Color Effects. Can you believe it? They have five contrast filters, and they're all really great. And I know you're going to love this one today. This one's often overlooked because people get confused by it. But I'm going to demystify it today for you. The problem is most people overthink this filter, but when you see how easy it is to use... You're going to love it. Let's get started. How about we consult the Nick Manual for Color Effects on the Contrast Color Range Filter with these lovely pineapples in the water. Isn't this cool? This is about as technical as we're going to get here. And it's not very technical, by the way. But let's take a look. Color. There's two main sliders here that are very important. The color slider and the color contrast slider. But what will this filter actually give us? Well, it adjusts the contrast between the selected colors in an image. That's what it does, but it does it very well, as you'll see. Let's understand the first slider called color. This slider selects the color range to which to apply contrast. Select a color and the subjects in that color will be lightened, while the opposite colors will be darkened. Think RGB CMY. The opposite of red is cyan. The opposite of green is magenta. The opposite of blue is yellow. If you just remember those three things, honestly, this is about as technical as I get. So in other words, if we select yellow, we'll make blues darker. If we select red, we'll make cyans darker and reds will get lighter. And if we select green, Green will get lighter and magenta will get darker. But just keep that in the back of your mind, okay? Secondly, we have a slider called Color Contrast. Adjust the level of contrast to be added between the selected color and the complementary subject of that color. That's just the amount of contrast you'll add. In other words, if you select green, it's going to get lighter when you drag that slider to the right and its complementary color of magenta will get darker as you slide it to the right. And of course, we have a brightness slider, a typical brightness slider. We have a contrast slider. It's just the contrast slider. And then we have shadows and highlights like we do in all these color effects filters. So that's it. And now I'm going to give you three examples. I'm going to show you how simple and easy this is, but what kind of beautiful results you can get. Are you ready? Let's go. I have three images for us to look at today. I have this bike image on this colorful wall. I have this image of some houses here, and I have this image of a beautiful swallowtail butterfly. These are all stock images, but we'll see here how this filter works with these three images. Let's start out with a swallowtail butterfly. Let me open up my Nick Selective tool. I'm just going to open it up for my actions panel, my TK8, my actions panel. You could also open it up here from file and go under automate and find it right here. But I like to use this action because it's quick. But here it is. I've made myself a preset called Contrast Color Range Zeroed. And all that is is the Contrast Color Range filter with all the settings shut off so we can start from scratch. So I'm going to go ahead and click this and it'll launch color effects. The Contrast Color Range filter will come up. And it will be zeroed out, as you can see right here. Isn't this a pretty image? Well, let's see if we can make it more beautiful. All right, so we have the color adjustment here. So remember, this is where we pick the color that we want to be the lightest. And then its complementary color will be darker. Now, do not overthink this filter and get all technical on it. It's just interesting that you know... It's probably enough for you to know that whatever color you select will get lighter and it's complementary will get darker, but don't even think so much about it. My tip is to just drag this slider across. Now, nothing will happen when I drag this right now because I don't have the color contrast turned up. Now, this just affects the amount of contrast that will be between those two colors. 
So for instance, right now it's on red. Anything red in here will be light, will go lighter. And anything uh, that would be cyan would go darker. So let me start to drag this across. Okay, so anything red will get lighter. Anything cyan will get darker. And I like to start out like right around 100% and then just start dragging the slider through. This is what I mean by do not overthink this filter. Start dragging the slider, and I recommend drag it the whole way through the range here, okay? You're going to encompass every one of the colors. Now, again, the main color will get lighter, and the complementary color will get darker. But just let your eyes decide on what looks good for it, okay? So let's start to drag this across. And we'll stop at a point where we think it looks good, but I like to go the whole way through the range first. Okay. So now let me start to, that looks pretty cool, but let me start to drag back and see if I can balance this out and make those colors all seem to work really well together. And right there looks really good. Now here is the before and here's the after, but look at that beautiful color I brought out. Now I think I may be overdoing the effect. Uh, let me keep going to the right so you can see what's happening here as I go more to the right. You see that? And now... There's tons of color contrast in there, and I'm centered on somewhere around magenta in this area right here, but let me start to drag it to the left. But again, don't even be concerned about that. Just look at the image. Does your eyes like what they're seeing, or do your eyes like what they're seeing? And I'm going to say right about here looks really good. Now, here's the before, and here is the after, and I like that. Now, we could come here and um, give it a little bit more contrast if we think we need it. And I might like a little extra contrast in there. And I may want to just lighten it up a little bit. So simple adjustments here, right? Maybe a little bit of lightness. Now, if I'm blocking up shadows, I can drag this shadow slider to the right and protect some of the shadows. And I may do that. And if I have any blown out highlights, like maybe in here's a little bit of highlights that are a little too light. So I can drag this across. You see that? And just kind of tone that down a little bit. Now let's take a look. Here is the before and here is the after. But look how nicely that has really brought this image out color wise. Now I feel I may be a little too strong in the contrast color range. So I'm going to pull this back just a little wee bit. Maybe to right about here. Let's take a look. Here is the before and here is the after. But really nice results. Now, of course, you can use control points. But remember, these tutorials are not about control points. They're really about how these filters work. But overall, I think this image looks beautiful just the way it is. And now let me check my contrast here. Do I want any more? Yeah, I think I just want a little more contrast. Again, here's the before and here's the after. But you see how easy that works. Now, again, my tip is do not overthink this filter. Understand that whatever color you pick on this slider right here, when you adjust the contrast, it's going to get lighter and its complementary color gets darker. If you can just keep that in the back of your mind, and if you can also remember RGB, CMY, the opposite of red is cyan, the opposite of green is magenta, and the opposite of blue is yellow. You don't even have to know that. If you can drag a slider, you can work this filter. It's just that easy, and I hope that makes sense. Please leave comments and questions and let me know if you've used this filter or do you think this is something that you can use. I would really love to hear from you. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe because when you uh, do those things, it really helps the YouTube algorithm to get my videos out to more people. I feel I'm a little bit too bright, so I'm going to pull this brightness adjustment back. Yeah, now that's really looking good. Here's the before, and here is the after. And I think I'm satisfied. I'm going to click apply, and that'll send us back into Photoshop. Now here is the before here, and here's the after. If you felt you've overdone it, you always have the opacity slider. You can back off a little bit, and I might just do that. Maybe to 75% before and after. Now let's try another image. Wasn't that fun? Let's see what it'll do on this one. I'm going to go ahead and use that same preset, which zeroes everything out. I'm going to go ahead and click that. And let's see what we can do with this one here. Here's my typical way of using this filter. Again, I'll take my contrast color range and start to drag it up. I'll stop right here. And then I'll just, again, like I showed you before, take this color range slider 
And you see this here. Let me show you the original. I'd like to make this a little more dark. So I'm going to drag this and watch that area. And when it gets dark, as dark as I want it to go, I'm going to stop at that point. But also go through the entire range just to see what's happening. And I'm also looking at the sky in the windows here, the reflection. So I'm, I'm looking to make that dark and also to make that sky a little more rich. Okay. I'm not thinking complementary colors. I'm not thinking anything. I'm just dragging a slider and looking for a beautiful image. If you think in those terms, look for a beautiful image, pull out a beautiful image, and that's how simple it is. Now take this contrast, color contrast. Let's drag it more to the right and see how the greens are starting to get a little lighter and just look to see what you think looks best or if I go to the left. No, I think I want the greens a little bit lighter. And so I'm going to go right about here. And now let's look at my contrast and let's bump up the contrast. Yeah, look at that. Just a little bit of extra contrast. I think it's light enough. Let's see. Here's the before and here's the after. And if we're blocking up any shadows, I always like to check that. And I think this might be a little too dark in here. So let me just open up the shadows just a little bit here. Okay, so before and after. But it's that simple. It's that easy. I'm going to click apply. We'll go back into Photoshop. Let's take a look. Here's the before and here's the after. That was a great result and super fast. Let me know if, again, if you like this filter, if you think this is something you could use, I would really want to hear from you. And let's go ahead and check our last image out here. This is a cool image of a bike against this really colorful wall. Let's see what this filter can do here. Again, I'm going to launch that same preset where everything's zeroed out on the contrast color range filter. All right, so we'll do the same thing. I'm going to start to drag my color contrast to the right. And that wall is getting really light, which I don't like so much. I would like that color to get darker. And let's see, that is a red color, all right? Now, let's start to drag the slider. And you can see the slider is on red. So, of course, it's going to be lighter because that's the color that we're picking at this point in time. But let's drag through the entire range. Let me know when you like something. Say, stop, Dave. Yeah, I wish you, I wish you could talk to me, but, but we can't. We're on YouTube here. All right. So that's what we have to work with. Okay, so now let me start coming back and finding something that my eye really likes. And I think my eye likes, likes that. I'd like a little more contrast, so I'm going to grab my contrast slider Typical old contrast slider, add a little more contrast, maybe something like that. Maybe I'll see if I can lighten this any. Be careful on this brightness slider because it can be really, you can do that. You've got a lot of range here, which is nice. So be careful. You don't want to go too crazy here. And I think, I was going to say right there, I'm at zero, which is probably not bad, actually. But how about right about there? And let me see if I can bump up the color contrast. Okay, and let me tweak this a little bit one way, a little bit the other way. See, if I get a certain point here, I can make sure I'm seeing this uh, change of color here. You know, there's a little bit of uh, a contrast between these two colors. They're both in the red range. But let's see, here's the before and here's the after. And I may want to protect my shadows a little, so I'm going to drag this shadow slider to the right. And I think right there, now here's my before, and here is my after. But now the image pops. I really think it looks good. Let me click Apply. We'll go back into Photoshop. Here's my before, and here's my after. But do you see how easy that is to use? And don't be afraid of this filter. It's very simple and easy to use. Now you know how to use the contrast color range filter. You need to start pulling this one out. I know you're going to love it. Let's take a look at the final results. Here's the swallowtail butterfly. This is the before and this is the after. Great result. The next image was this building here. A lot of color in here. Here is the before and here is the after. I love the result on this one. And finally, 
the bike against this colorful wall, the before and the after. Doesn't that really pop? Well, there it is, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click the bell notification icon. Every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.